Well, I don't know if finding the lions is <laughs> what just happened. I was coming around the corner because there was apparently tracks on Zoe's, and, well, there was just a lion mess all next to the road, and I think they gave me more of a shock than they gave anybody else. So they can see that there is the whole pride is here. There's one of the Birmingham boys is also with them. So isn't that cool to see? And I'm so happy that they're lying down here because we're right on the boundary with Arethusa. We are probably from here, I would say, 100 meters, and we'll be then on Arethusa, so, or maybe 200 meters. So the fact that they've lay here is really good news, and hopefully this is where they're going to continue to lie for the rest of the day. They certainly don't look like they want to go anywhere. They're all quite flat at this stage and very relaxed. Now, I just quickly need to tell Aubrey where I am. Yeah, obviously, if you just come to this open area north of Impala Plains, um, just on the northern side, closer towards the power lines, you'll find me right next to the road. So, well, that was easy enough. I was hoping that we would not have them crossing. I was telling Seb that we can only pray that they lay on one of these open sections, so here and then Impala Plains just to our south, otherwise they were going to be gone and into Arethusa. But how cool is this to see them all back here again? We certainly haven't had much of the Nkumas over this winter, so every time we get to see them is exciting. Michael, you're wondering if the animals call less when it's cold. Well, Michael, I'm not really sure. I, not really, actually. I mean, we we hear male lions calling, female lions calling when it's cold, male leopards calling. It doesn't really matter if it's cold. They still have to mark territory and still have to make sure that they are defending their area and keeping other predators at bay and, and keeping you know intruders out so whether it's cold or not they're still going to be calling and, and making sure that there isn't others around what you will find though is that they're active a lot more than what they would be if it was warm obviously when it's hot covered in the fur that they are they tend to get too hot quickly and then they go and find somewhere to lie down so when it's cold like this you will find that they generally are a little bit more active Although by the looks of this pride, they are not going absolutely anywhere right now. There's a few of the cubs are still looking around. And you've got Amber Eyes, which is closest to us, that has got her head up. And then that female there that's busy grooming. So Amber Eyes is this one with her head up right here. That is typical of hers, always watching what's going on and making sure everybody's looked after. But I think they must have got something last night because the bellies of the cubs are fairly big so you can see uh, look at that and there's a bit of blood on the paws and blood on the face so i wonder if they didn't get something small maybe something like a impala or a wildebeest could be because not all the cubs have big bellies but some of them definitely have quite large ones and i'm not sure what they looked like yesterday um, obviously we didn't see them they crossed in about 20 minutes after game drive finished so they moved quite a bit last night and they've done a big loop they've walked around the central parts of juma and now right on the western boundary so they have been walking a lot hopefully her moving is not a sign that these guys are going to start going somewhere because amber eyes is always the one that moves a lot and no that's good she's just going to the toilet that's a good girl she's moved away a little bit to go to the toilet so she doesn't go right next to all the cubs look how she's just listening Kathy and you, mummy, you want to know, do ox peckers land on predators? No. So they will not land on predators for two reasons. One is landing on a predator is basically a death sentence. You're going to end up in a situation where you're going to get eaten. And the second thing with landing on a predator is that there's very few parasites for them. Remember, predators are very good at grooming themselves, particularly something like a lion. They will spend hours grooming each other and themselves. And so the tick load and parasite load on a lion is so little that the ox pickers really to get to take the risk to land on them to feed is not worth it in any way so if you've had a domestic cat you'll know that they hunt birds effectively and even big cats like this if a bird was close enough they would grab them i've seen lions killing guinea fowl and franklins many times over the years so it's definitely something that they do go after oh look at the claws on this one he's busy grooming his claws the one closest to us or she should i say Look at the size of those paws already. And you can see the bits of blood that Seb was talking about just now. Seb spotted the blood on that paw just now. So just grooming in between all the claws, making sure that we get rid of any of that bits of gunk that might develop inside there. Now I see another lioness is just walking a little bit. I wonder if they're just going to be up and down. I hope not. I hope this is where they want to settle for the day because if they move any further to the west like i say we're not going to have them for much longer i'm trying 
trying to see the female that's got the hole in her tummy. I think she's the female at the back there. Patrick, the lion cubs will be weaned at about, I would say at about eight months. They generally, oh, she, is she peeing on the other one? She is. Oh no, that's not nice. <laughs> that's not a nice way to start your day, that's for sure. I would not want to be peed on by a lion. But Patrick, the lion cubs will be re weaned completely at eight months, sometimes a little bit earlier. You sometimes find at six months already the females are not producing too much milk, but eight months is around the time. Now this in Kahuma Pride, these little ones, they're well over a year now. Remember that they were born in about May last year, so they've developed a little bit and they are now getting very large and they will no longer be on milk at all. You can see they're up and moving. I don't think we're going to have the Inkuma Pride this afternoon, unfortunately. I think they're going to continue this movement. In terms of the Birmingham boy, I actually haven't looked at him enough to know who it is just yet. We'll see now as he turns, hopefully, and faces us. It's Infumo. So that's nice to see Infumo. We haven't seen you for a while. Good to see you, big boy. And he's looking as healthy as ever. And you can see he's following the females now. So that's good news. And hopefully they will settle again it doesn't look like they are they're full bellied so I wouldn't expect them to be walking too much unless they want water in which case if they want water the next place for water is Red Dam which is inside Arethusa and is in a straight line basically from where we are now I'm hoping that they're just trying to find themselves some shady thickets that they can then start lying in Ohi Bacon, you want to know is if it's true that if you stare at lions for long enough that they'll start to get agitated and growl at you. This particular pride, or in terms of the lions and the Sabi Sands that are fairly used to us and the vehicles that move around, no. I mean, you can sit and stare at these lions and most of the time they won't even bother with you. They might just look at you and then they'll just kind of flop down and not really worry. Um, if you're on foot, yes, then that's a very different story. If you're on foot and you stare at them like that, they, they do tend to get quite upset. Much like what you'll see with leopards as well. Leopards, when you're tracking them, if you walk straight past them, and even if they're very close, they'll often just flatten and, and they'll look at you and they won't worry too much. As soon as you pay attention to them, they'll then get far more aggressive because they've now been spotted. But look, the little cub is just sniffing the air. Now this is the little cub that's got quite deep amber eyes as well. So this one's got much darker eyes than what amber eyes has got, but they are still quite orange in comparison to some of the others. Like I said, I'm hoping they're going to just flop down under all these quarries. What we need is that sun to come up now and just to be warm that these lionesses decide no they're not going to move at all what I'm going to do is just move slightly and we'll leave the cubs here they'll come now now but the lionesses are moving in the nice big open clearing and the light should be hitting them shortly so it will be really beautiful if we just try and stop and see it seems though like they might have spotted something as well I see the one lioness has got her head down and is just watching what's going on the rest are all spread out all over the show at this stage you can see here's a lioness in front. They definitely are moving towards the boundary, unfortunately. It's not ideal, but it's the way it goes. They're just saying hello to everybody that is out with us this morning. They, I'm sure, are as cold as we are, but very happy and excited to be seeing the lion. So you can see there she stands now. She's watching quite intently so I don't know if she's spotted something hopefully like I say she is going to lie down somewhere here and that will be the end of it and these quarries will provide the perfect shady area for them to spend their morning but she certainly has got a posture of she's seen something Isn't she beautiful? Look at those eyes and body structure of the Inkahumas is always amazing. They're big girls. For I always see them and forget just how large they actually are. They really are big and muscular and it's always a pleasure to see them. So Lynn 
the Birmingham's, you're wondering if all Birmingham's have mates with the Mpuma Pride. As far as I know, yes, they have. Um, so you'll find that all of them have, but the, you'll find that Mfumo and Tinyo tend to spend a lot of time with the Nkuhumas. Neno and Nsuko every now and then, but Mfumo and Tinyo are ones that spend a lot of time. We find that Nsuko, he tends to be a lot with the Styx Pride and spends a lot of time down there and in the south, and Neno bounces around all over the place. But Mfumo and Tinyo are mostly with the Nkuhumas, and, and, but they have all mated, as far as I know, with the varying different females. That's good. Lie down there. Well done. That's what we need. We need static lions that certainly will make life much better for us. But I heard something in the distance, and I couldn't hear nicely because a vehicle started, but it sounded almost like leopard or lions fighting in the distance. And I saw all the lions looked immediately that way. So I'm not sure if it was an elephant or, or leopards going at each other, but there certainly was a noise that came from our south at the moment. Our lioness is up and moving again. Right, well, we're going to follow our Nkuhuma Pride. We'll stay with them as long as we can. Hopefully they don't cross over. And while we do that, I believe Jamie is out in this beautiful sunshine of the Mara and wanting to say good morning.